Hello, I'm Dr. Mara, and this is A-Level Politics. So, the first thing we need to ask ourselves is why politics? You've got lots of options now at A-Level. Why choose to spend two years studying politics? My first answer to this question is that politics is the most relevant and current A-Level that you can study. Now, what do I mean by that? It will be part of your homework to read, listen, and watch the news. It is the only subject where by the end of year 13, you will be writing about events as they unfolded throughout your course in your essays. In that sense, it is different to any GCSE you have studied. You will be using the concepts and skills you learn throughout the course in real time. You will be thinking on your feet. In short, you will be thinking like a politician. Why else? Well, it's not the only reason you're doing A-levels, but certainly university considerations play a role. And politics is an excellent choice to show the universities that you are a high caliber thinker. Politics is highly regarded because it enables a student to form the skills that will enable them to do well at university. But also it shows that you will not be a passive learner, but a mover and shaker on and off campus. It is the politics students that might be the thorn in the side of university leaders whilst they're enrolled, but it is the politics students that will make them famous as well. The universities know there is no such thing as bad publicity. Beyond university, the career prospects are endless. Of course, the usual areas of civil service, law, law enforcement, and journalism come up. But thinking politically opens up a whole world of opportunities you never knew existed in what's called the third sector, charities and nonprofits, think tanks and pressure groups. Finally, politics is also a lively subject, a fun subject. Because whilst we do read and write a lot, we also discuss and debate a lot. In other words, it's a wordy subject. But it will make you a logical and measured thinker articulate, and hopefully witty and eloquent. In other words, you will be a hit at the dinner parties. If you don't believe me, think about what Aristotle said. Politics is what separates us from the rest of the animals. Okay, but seriously, everyone wants to do politics, but that doesn't mean one should. You have to discern if it is right for you. Are you actually passionate about current affairs? If the answer is no, you will not do well in this course, as you have to spend your precious time watching the Andrew Marr show instead of Bake Off. <clears throat> um, that's the great Brit British Bake Off. Also, can you actually write? This is not for the faint of heart when it comes to penmanship. Each paper has two 30 markers, which are six paragraphs each. And finally, do you actually like the sound of your own voice? And the voices of others, for that matter. Talking is not optional in this one. Okay. So what's actually in the course? Let's start with year 12. Here, you will start by studying UK politics. This includes democracy and participation, political parties, electoral systems, voting behavior, and the media. Each of these chapters are then broken down into, future, into further subjects, uh, further topics. For example, within democracy and participation, we look at different types of democracy, direct and indirect, e-democracy, pressure groups, civil liberties, and human rights. Then we do a brief history of the major parties in the UK, outlining their principles and how they have developed, changed, and where they might go from here. Then we look at electoral systems, the different ways people can elect their representatives, for example, proportional or first-past-the-post like we have in the UK, which is considered simple and clear, but not fair to smaller parties or interests. Within this unit, the exam paper also includes the main core political ideologies, conservatism, liberalism, and socialism. This is when debating really kicks in. We look at the history of these ideas and evaluate their successes and failures. In the second half of the year, we dissect the UK government. How is this country run? Where does power lie? We look at the age-old institutions that make this democracy great. We look at what it means to have an unwritten or uncodified constitution and why that might not be such a bad thing, despite what the US or other newer democracies might think. Finally, in year 12, we look at what's called a non-core non political ideology. For example, nationalism. What are the driving beliefs that color a political person's outlook and their worldview? In year 13, we turn to all things American. Most colleges choose this paper anyway, but for me, it was an easy choice, and I think a bonus for students at St. B's to hear things from the horse's mouth. Again, we will analyze and decipher the American governmental project, beginning with that sacred document called the U.S. Constitution. 
We will look at the idea of a federal system, that's where the national government leaves many issues to be, co to be covered by state governments. We'll look at the checks and balances in the U.S. system between the executive, i.e. the presidency, the legislative, i.e. Congress, and the judiciary, i.e. the Supreme Court. Whereas in the U.K. system, Parliament is clearly sovereign, the American thing is a bit more complicated. This can be frustrating to watch as the president vetoes legislation from lawmakers in Congress um, solely on ideological grounds. But all Americans in the world are indebted to the founding fathers of the U.S. and their brilliant governmental system when a megalomaniac is elected into the White House, since he's actually hemmed in in a lot of ways. Just like um, the other two papers, uh, the U.S. paper will have a two-hour exam, uh, but in this case, instead of a 24-mark question, there will be two 12-marks, plus the normal two 30-marks. That uh, covers the course and I look forward to hearing from anybody if they have any questions and hopefully I look, I look forward to seeing some of you there next year. Thanks very much. Bye bye.